हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू ऑल एन लॉ गाइस दिस इज अ मेडिकल वीडियो लेक्चर एंड टुडे टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज मेडिकल वीडियो लेक्चर फिजियोलॉजी and today's topic of discussion is ANP ANP that's atrial nitroureteric nitroureteric peptide nitroureteric peptide and this is really very important for USMLE examination and even for a medical students okay so let's start A N P, okay. And there are many questions uh, can be asked on this A N P. Let's talk basic thing. What it is actually, okay? It's a polypeptide. It's a polypeptide. Okay, it's a polypeptide, and it has amino acids, amino acids of twenty eight. Okay, twenty eight. and it is secreted by who atrial that's nothing but heart so imagine this is the heart of a beautiful lady and sorry okay uh, this if, if this is a heart and this when there is how it secreted i'm going to tell you okay and this is from the musculature of the heart okay Let's talk of this is symptom over here. Okay, right. The A N P is secreted during the overstretching of the atrial muscles in conditions like increase in the blood volume. So anything that increases the stretching of this atria will lead to the secretion of A N P. For example. For example. if there is an increase in the blood volume in the right atrium okay anything that increases anything that stretches the right atrium goes and secretes what you call uh, ANP right guys now let's see what happens with ANP what are the functions of ANP okay this ANP in turn increases the excretion of two things one is a sodium sodium it helps in the excretion of the sodium okay by wa and water because it has to decrease the blood volume that's why right and this in turn maintains what you call blood volume so why it is secreted it's secreted because of over stretching and why there was a over stretching it is because of the increase in the blood volume so what is the effect what is the function of anp is to decrease the blood volume by excreting sodium and water right guys right now the effects of what you call effect of anp okay the atrio nitroureteric peptide increases the excretion of sodium right we know that basic thing right through the urine by mesangial cells how by it relaxes the mesangial mesangial cells okay so these are present in the kidney okay and increases the what you call GFR glomerular filtration rate. How it does is increasing the glomerular filtration rate by relaxing the mesangial cells and dilating the afferent arterioles. Okay, if this is what you call Bowman's capsule, this is a tough, tough arteries, right? Capillaries we call it, and this is afferent and this is efferent. Okay, so when it dilates this one, when there's a dilatation of this one, okay, dilatation of this and causes relaxation of the mesangial cells over here, okay, mesangial cells over here, and that increases the GFR, 
okay because if they are dilated more blood will come out right reaches the nephron so how it acts and that leads to increase in the excretion of sodium now the second thing inhibiting the sodium reabsorption from the distal convoluted tubule and DCT collecting the distal convoluted tubule and collecting ducts okay and the third mechanism how it increases what you call sodium excretion is increasing the secretion of sodium into the renal tubules so three mechanisms are clear how it helps in the excretion of the sodium remember whenever the sodium is excreted some water is also excreted through that right the it what you call it increases the GFR by dilating the arterioles efferent arterioles and relaxing the mesangial cells so the more so GFR the more chances of excretion of the sodium right good and the second th second thing is inhibiting the sodium reabsorption from two parts of the nephron that is the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct and the third is it increasing the secretion of sodium into the renal tubules when the sodium is secreted in the renal tubules and they go and they go into the CD and what you got collect index and excrete to the urine right now there is a phenomenon we call it the escape phenomenon okay because the ANP is responsible for escape phenomenon and prevention of edema in the primary hyperaldosteronism okay in spite of remember in spite of increase ECF that's an extra cellular fluid okay this is what there is no edema you see in a primary hyperaldosteronism even though the ECF is increased that's a really very clinical question and a very basic question right now let's move on to the other part of ANP what's effect of ANP on pressure that's a blood pressure okay ANP decreases the blood pressure that's a basic concept you should remember and how it acts let's discuss it lowers the BP okay by it relaxes the smooth muscle fibers and causes vasodilatation vaso dilatation or vasodilation vasodilation all right okay and inhibiting the renin secretion from jg apparatus renin no renin stops the renin secretion from jg cells that is the juxtaglobular cells right or apparatus and even inhibiting the vasoconstrictor effect of angiotensin 2 Okay, and what do you call inhibiting the vasoconstrictive fact, right? And the fourth one is inhibiting the vasoconstrictive effect of catecholamines. Okay, guys, so did you get me how it acts? So it lowers the BP by vasodilatation, by relaxing the smooth muscle cells of the blood vessels, and it inhibits the secretion of renin from the JG apparatus or the you know, juxtaglomerular apparatus of the kidney and it inhibits the action of angiotensin 2 that is a vasoconstrictor effect of the angiotensin 2 and it also inhibits the vasoconstrictor constrictor effect of the catecholamines guys thank you so much for watching this video I hope this video is very helpful for your ESML step 1 and for even for our medical students thank you so much take care